everybody. Welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to be doing some fuel system upgrades on our dually. These common rail engines require really, really, really good and super fine fuel filtration. The, uh, the factory filter, which is down in there, is marginal at best. So the aftermarket has come up with all kinds of solutions um, for the filtering issue. You'll see some that just have a, an auxiliary filter mounted down in here. There's all kinds of them that mount uh, right here on the frame. Fast, air dog, um, there's, you know, there's all kinds of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own and uh, we'll see how it goes. I've got some components kicking around and I've ordered a few other components and we'll see what we can put together. I've got so much junk around here. It's always fun to try and make something. And we can make a pretty decent system that will fulfill the requirements of this truck. It's a stock engine and a stock truck. We don't need no um, insane amount of fueling. So we'll be able to make something that works just fine. Here's some of the stuff we've got kicking around. These are um, Cummins filter heads. They're uh, one inch by 14 threads per inch. They'll take the, the cat filter that everybody likes to use, the 1R0750. Um, they'll also take what we're going to be, we're going to be using fleet guard filters, man. It's a Dodge truck with a Cummins engine. We're going to use fleet guard filters. So we're going to have a, um, an, an FS1001 filter strainer. And then it'll get pushed through a uh, FF5814, which is their, uh, what do they call it, a nano uh, I can't remember what they call the median a nano filter. Anyway, it's a really good filter. It filters down to two microns. That's what we want for this engine. Uh, we've got this bracket here that we're going to use, and then we have to make uh, a little extra add-on to the bracket. This bracket is going to go under here like this and catch the front box mount. And then we're going to drill and tap a 5 16 hole through there that's what will hold this bracket to the truck while the box isn't on. First, we got to go over to the drill press and open this hole up to a half inch. Here's our mount bracket. Now, I need to make a plate that comes back from there that will hold the filter heads. I've got the bracket made up now and the filter heads attached. Um, the, the fittings on these are M12 by 1.5 millimeters. So we've got two here, um, AN, two metric fittings, and a, and a number six AN connector that ties the two heads together. And I've, I've drilled these holes a little bit larger. So um, once I get this fitting tight under here, then we'll tighten the, the bolts on the heads to make sure we're not putting any undue stress on anything. There's our pump mounted. Now we'll uh, start getting fittings and lines and stuff sorted out. I moved the pump. Um, I had it sitting up on top of the bracket. I've got it down there now. Um, it was, I, I put the fuel filler net kind of to where it, I figured it would be in the three dimensions of space. And the, the fuel pump may have interfered with it and, you know, rubbed on it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's actually better down there. So because when I take the filters off, it'll kind of keep the pump. It'll keep a prime in it because it's it's below the, the level of the filter heads. I've gone ahead. I've got my first line put on. So we're going to start building up the lines now. I'll show you how uh, I'm doing it and what I'm using. First thing I've done is I've popped the... This is the suction line that goes up to the lift pump at the front. So we've pulled that off the sending unit, and now we have to put an adapter on it to, uh, that will adapt this to AN. Lots of different companies make these. This one is a Russell. I've used them on my race cars. So they're pretty simple. That little horseshoe-shaped guy goes on there behind the barb. And then this piece, the actual adapter, has got an O-ring in it to seal against there. And you just push it over and screw it together and we've now converted this to an it takes two wrenches to tighten this together 
and be careful what you're doing because you can see it's it's plastic it's all very flexible so now what we have to do is we have to make up a, a fuel line that's going to go from here down to the inlet of our pump we're using this um, number six air equip aqp hose it's good stuff nhra approved as well as our fittings we're using summit uh racing they, i think they call them push tight um these are great i've used these on my race car for years never had a problem so to put them together you just um a little lubrication on here and you could put a little lube down the line if you want to and i just push them against the edge of the bench here and 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 push them on they make all kinds of different different ends let me try one so you just work it on see it goes on i'll need both hands to finish it but that's how you put them together. I think probably if you warmed up the end of the hose with a clothing steamer or something, it would help a lot. But the steamer's in the house right now, not out here. We'll go ahead, we'll screw this on here. And then we got to try and figure out um, how long we need it. We'll be putting a 90 degree elbow on that end. Now we got to cut it to length where my thumb is. And it's best to use a hose cutter. This stuff is pretty good hose. And trying to cut it with a knife or scissors or a hatchet, it's not going to work. This stuff cuts nice. Look. You get a nice square cut. Now we're going to push a 90 on the end of it. So I haven't got enough of these ones, but we can harvest some from here. There. We got a little lube on it, and you just... You just work it in there. The 90s, you can't really push on the bench because you'll bend them. So you just kind of twist and push. And they go on. Now we can go test fit it. So there's this one on. This is the one that the pump will pull the fuel out of. And then it's going to push it through the, the water separator. Then through the filter. And then back out to the, this is the line that goes back up to the front of the truck. So now we're gonna hook that up. So first we have to convert our factory fuel line to AN. So to do that, we're gonna put this guy in. So first thing we put our, our factory lock over it and then we just push it in. There we go. Now we can make our line. Here's our line that comes back out of the filters to the to the, the truck proper. And we've got this little guy, This uh, it's a 180 degree fitting. So we gotta kinda put that on there like that so we can figure out the length of our line. Um, well, about there. Then we'll go over back over to the bench and put it together. And there we have it. They're all put together. Once I, um, once I install this permanently, I will I will um, clamp them off so that they you know you haven't got undue stress on any of them. But um, that's that's pretty good. And I'm waiting for the filters. But while I wait for the filters, I'm going to take this off. We can get this stuff all cleaned up and painted. And um, now we got to work out on the front. Now that we're going to have a fuel pump at the back, we can get rid of this uh, fuel pump at the front that um, everyone I talk to is shocked that we still even have. So um, the lift pump is screwed to the back of the fuel filter canister and it, it just has kind of an O-ring to seal it to the inlet port. Although many of these things have a threaded inlet port also. I'm not sure if this one does. We won't know till we get the pump off. So I've unplugged it and I have to reach around and there's, there's four little screws that hold it to the canister. I'm going to take them off now and we'll see what we get. Oh, and I'm going to open the drain valve and drain the canister first. Well, that sure was fun. In my quest to get this fuel pump off of here, I finally had to remove the entire housing because somewhere along the line, somebody had replaced this pump and absolutely destroyed this screw. There, uh, you can see there, they're little Allen screws, and 
well, those three are Allen. This one is round, round drive now. So we're going to have to see if we can, at least now that it's out of the truck, I can see if maybe I can grab it with a vice grip or something and get it turning. Unbelievable. I finally had to break the ear off the pump so I could grab this thing with a vice grip. Wow. Oh, well, it's off. Back when these things were being changed out to rear mount pumps in the in the dealerships, uh, Chrysler had a kind of a thing, something like this. This is just an example. It's too big. That that screwed on there and allowed the, the tech to screw in the, the banjo bolt for that. There would be a banjo fitting that hooked up to this line. So uh, we don't have that. I, I was trying to find um, a filter housing off a scrap truck that already had that thing installed on it, but to no luck. So we're going to do the next best thing. We're going to make one. Well, after a little bit of screwing around, we managed to make our little piece. So that, that just goes in there like that, of course, with uh, an O-ring. And that will um, convert this to a number 6 AN so we can go ahead and connect our fuel line from the back. And now we've got a little more room here. So we can attach it with normal cap screws, not those uh, darn Allen bolts. Uh, a, a lot of guys, when they when they put the big pump and filter unit on the back, they will just uh, bypass this thing and 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 get rid of it. Um, and and yeah, you can do that. There's a little there's a little block, um, a little filter delete block that you get. Um, because there are still a couple of connections that need to be maintained, but um, I'm, I'm going to keep it in there. It, it lets me keep this filter here, which is kind of the last line of defense. And on top of that, the fuel heater is in here. The water and fuel sensor is in there. Although no water should make it here anymore. It should stay in the, in the water separator at the back. But anyway, I, I just, this is the way I want to do it. Well, I got the filter cartridge back in there and it was pretty tricky because you've got these um, these fuel lines that bolt to the sides of it. You have to make sure that the, the crush washers go back in, but we got that all done. And now you can see here, we've got our little, our number six fitting sticking out the back of it. So now what we're going to put on is this guy. This is a, a fuel pressure gauge adapter. So that's going to go on next before we put our line down to the um, the actual fuel line. You can see there I attached uh, a number four steel braided line to our gauge fitting. I ran the line up here and put a fuel pressure gauge um, right there on the top of the cowl. Here's our fuel line I made up to go uh, from the filter back down to the main fuel line in the chassis. And we have to crawl underneath and put another one of these Russell fittings on there. That looks great. I got a coat of paint on everything. I've got everything final assembled. I'm just waiting on the filters to come tomorrow. I'm kind of stuck until I get them. And I have to run the wire um, up to the front for the fuel pump. I don't dare do that now because if this thing ever got enlivened up, it's hooked up to the fuel tank now. There's no filters. Oh, what a mess that would make, eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I at least I know myself that well. I'm smart enough to not do that. Our filters have arrived. So we can carry on with our fuel system now. Um, these are the ones for at the back. And this is a Fleet Guard oil filter with the, uh, what do they call this stuff? It's got the latest, greatest filtering media in it. And this is a Fleet Guard uh, front fuel filter, which we'll be changing at the same time um, just because. And I ordered the um, the proper socket for the oil filter cap. And while I was there, all the stuff came from Geno's Garage. Uh, good place. They've got everything, man. And I ordered a fuel filter socket for my fourth gen. And apparently I need this when I change the fuel filter underneath for the uh, water and fuel sensor. We'll find out. And... Uh, Man, they even give you stickers. I like this one. If you can't fix it with a hammer, you must have an electrical problem. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, a big uh, Cummins decal. That's cool. 
So first thing we're going to do is make sure our rubber seals are there. They're brand new, so um, for some reason only the filter strainer came with a new seal. But So now we've got a spare one because these are, these are brand new heads and they had brand new seals on them. So um, the fuel flow is going in through this end. So we're going to um, make sure that the filter strainer is first in line. Oh, and another thing I, I maybe should have pointed out. But when you put these on, these heads have a, a flow direction, right? So that, that that makes sure the fuel or oil flows in and goes down through these holes and out through this hole. So you want to make sure that your inlet, ah, uh, let's see if we can see it there. See your inlet there is to the to the outer side of the filter, and then it goes out through here, which joins to there, and that'll go through the connect to the inside of this filter and then out through here and back out to the to the truck so we'll get these things on just like any other filter you, you screw them on hand tight and uh we'll be good to go that looks cool fleet guard filters on a cummins engine not cat filters and we'll make sure that the um the drain valve and the strainer is closed yeah strata that's their new media and this is nanonet Oh, strat, straddle pour, I think, is what the oil filter is called. Anyway, all we've got left to do now is get the power back back to here, and we'll be ready to fire this truck up. So what we got to do is go down here, and somewhere down here, uh, I'll find it, is the original wire for the, uh, the original lift pump. And uh, we have to connect that up in this corner here somewhere. I'm going to mount a relay, and then we'll use the relay to run the pump at the back because... Um, uh, this pump was rated for a maximum of 5 amps, and I'm pretty sure that one at the back can draw 10 or more. And these trucks um, do not have an actual physical mechanical fuel pump relay. It's uh, a, basically a transistor. It's an electronic relay within the tip -um. And if you put too much draw on it, it'll fry it. We do not want to fry our tip -um. Here's a little bracket with a couple of relay bases I've made up. Um, this will be the fuel pump relay and the air compressor relay. So we're going to go ahead, get that mounted in the engine compartment and start hooking up some wires. Here we've got our relays installed. And the first thing we're going to hook up is this pigtail here. That's going to, I got to fish it down through the wiring and hook it up down there. You can see the orange plug. That's the original fuel pump plug. And we're going to use this to, rather than turn the fuel pump on and off, to turn the relay on and off. Now we've got to fish this down to the back. This is actually connected to the points of the relay and this will run our fuel pump. I've got the wire run back and an end put on it and the fuel pump plugged in. Uh, once we've got it up and running and I know everything's good, I'll go all the way along it and get all this wiring um, tethered so it's not going to flop around and, and and vibrate on stuff. I've got this all buttoned up now. Uh, to power the fuel pump relay, we just went over here to the, the hot stud on our on our winch switch with a, an inline fuse holder. It's got a 20 amp fuse in it. That'll be plenty to run this thing. So now we're going to bring it to life and see what happens. Now before we try starting it, we're just going to pull this out and get our old uh, relay jumper here and see if the fuel pump runs and see if it builds up pressure and see if there's any leaks. Okay, you can hear it. It's, it's pushing fuel. Well, don't see anything back here. But that's no good. Our little mess at the front was easy to fix. I had just um, inadvertently left the drain valve on the fuel filter housing open. So now we're going to see what happens here. Let's see what kind of pressure this thing can make. Thirteen psi. That's that's pretty good.
There was a little leak here too because I had somehow forgot to uh, <laughs> tighten this, but it's okay now. Pump is whirring away. Nothing leaking out the front. I wasn't sure if my homemade fitting would work, you know, but it seems to be okay. Okay, and let's see. I, um, I don't think it will hold when I turn it off because everything will bleed back through the return in the CP3. Yeah, there she goes back down. Well, let's put the relay in and see if we can start this thing up and see what happens. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, I heard the fuel pump kick on for a sec. All right, let's go out and see how our little lift pump is doing. Ah, it's there, we're in a way. There we go, just sitting there at 13 PSI, 12 and a half. Perfect. Well, I got to say that worked out pretty well. We've upgraded our fuel system. Works great. It doesn't leak. And uh, that's going to protect our uh, fuel injectors a lot better than the, you know, uh, factory filter. I was going to call it sketchy, but, well, it depends who you talk to. A lot of guys will tell you the factory filter is sketchy at best. But anyway, all it is now is the last line of defense. So if something were to happen, a hose started coming apart or something, that one up here will catch the junk before it goes into the engine. And uh, this one up here still has the water and fuel sensor and the fuel heater in it. Um, we will look at down the road. There are, um, at the back there, the, the filter strainer that we put in, there are some you can get that have got the water and fuel sensor in the bottom of them and we could extend the wires back to there and, and have the water and fuel sensor back there. Um, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Anyway, I'm going to take off for now. I want to thank you for tuning in. Hope you'll come back and see us again. And until then, this is Kevin saying so long from the Claremont Classic Garage.